So let's talk about Soul Hackers 2, the latest entry in the Megami Tensei franchise. What's going on everyone? I'm Dom from The Game Looters and I have been covering Soul Hackers 2 and will continue to cover Soul Hackers 2 right here on the channel. In full transparency, I am playing through the game right now for review. Thank you my friends over at Atlas for providing a man like me a beautiful code for Soul Hackers 2. But unfortunately, I cannot launch my review until release date. So please look forward to my final review and impressions for the game when it comes to release date. I will also be releasing some guides and walkthroughs, crossing fingers, and that should be coming around release date as well. So we're here to talk about Soul Hackers 2 and specifically the Metacritic on Soul Hackers 2, which is currently sitting at a 77. Today, I wanna talk through the overall score, give you kind of my impressions so far on the game, and I wanna break down others' thoughts the official reviews that are impacting the Metacritic score. So let's go ahead and jump in and I will show you guys the Metacritic and where it stands right now. So as you guys see here on screen, the Metacritic is currently sitting with 29 critic reviews at a 77, which is much lower than games like Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal, which for some reason, Persona 5 Royal, which is a, a seemingly better version of Persona 5 actually was a lower Metacritic, so you can't always trust these. Uh, and also lower than SMT5, respectively, which released earlier, or I'm sorry, released later last year. So uh, we have a lot of different scores, highest of which being a 90 from digitally downloaded. Uh, so we're gonna kind of go through kind of these right now. Uh, so as we kind of uh, switch over here, we're gonna kind of look at all of the different scores. Uh, and one thing that I kind of wanted to say kind of to go in order is just kind of like my impressions, my my 60 second impression of the game so far uh, without kind of giving any score. What I will say is I am leaning closer to uh, a nine versus anything else. Uh, it's definitely not higher than that, but from an enjoyability standpoint, it definitely is. Uh, one of my favorite experiences this year. Now, if you are a JRPG fan, we have been eating fantastic this year with entries like Triangle Strategy, with entries like even Pokemon Arceus, with entries like the most recent Xenoblade Chronicles 3. We have been eating excellently in 2022. And Soul Hackers 2 is just another game on top of those excellent library of games that you have to choose from this year. And so far, I will say that this is another great entry in Atlas's library and another great entry in the Megami Tensei franchise. The other thing I will add to on a personal level is you don't have to have any prior knowledge of where this game takes its name from, which is the actual Soul Hackers franchise. This isn't like the 97 entry. It has maybe little hints or nods as similarities, but it really is a true new entry. Megami Tensei game just happens to be kind of in that world and in that namestay of the game. And also too, I will say this is a perfect jump off point for anybody interested in the series as well. And with the options to have easy, normal, and hard modes, and there's a very hard mode which I don't have access to currently, the, you know, you do have a wide variety of challenges that you can face. If you want to go in easy and just experience the story, if you want to go in normal, which is where I'm playing, which is which is a nice balance of difficulty. And if you put in the work, it can get easier. And you have hard mode, which is is hard, where I will say that most of the difficulty for me uh, in, in these senses, if you spend time grinding, is from like the boss battles or you know mid boss battles or the harder enemies when you're playing the game not necessarily uh from you know every normal demon that you come across but overall i my time with the game so far is amazing it's fantastic ringo is very special uh but let's go ahead and kick it over to the professional reviewers that have reviewed the game so far and like i said make sure you guys look out for my final review my professional final review on august 26 so uh, we have a few different sites here who gave it a 90 uh mako reactor never heard of them uh noisy pixel game spew and digitally downloaded we're gonna look at digitally downloaded uh then we have some mid reviews here it looks like we immediately go from like 90 to mostly like you know an, an 80 have a couple here in the mids but 80 is a good midpoint an 8 out of 10 really solid game uh then we have a, a few uh other ratings here um 
Game Informer 65, you know, so let's go ahead and let's look at the top. Uh, let's look at the top, look at the bottom, and then we'll look at the middle. So if we have digitally downloaded here, they put that Soul Hackers 2 is a smart, evocative, and classically dark game from Shimigami Tensei tradition. It's not going to turn heads like Persona 5 and SMT5, but the developers seem to have realized this and taken the opportunity to deliver a hard-hitting and more thought-provoking narrative. To me, that's Atlas's getting back to its core vision for the broad and extended SMT property. That's what I want from this series. So just again, I want to provide a little color on, you know, some of their thoughts, you know, kind of with my experience so far. Uh, their first statement here says it's not going to turn heads like Persona 5 and SMT 5. I don't necessarily agree. I think, you know, Persona 5, uh, you know, operates in this very, very stylistic game. You know, very like anime aesthetic, and it's just it's just it just oozes and bleeds just style, and the way it does you know storytelling and everything like it does turn heads from everything in the menu. Then you look at something where it has SMT five, which gives you a more uh, a more modern take on some of the classic SMT entries that were like on the DS and 3DS and it modernizes them and it turns heads in that way. I think Soul Hackers 2 operates in a space in between to where it is very stylistic and a lot of the different areas that you will find yourself uh, traveling to, checking out like the Circus de Soleil, like the De La Manche, uh, you know, stores, the different areas that you can explore are just oozing style where I think this specific comment goes from is the dungeon exploration when you're actually uh, exploring the different uh, I don't want to say catacombs but the different areas that you explore uh, there there's something more akin to uh, Tartarus in Persona 3 or something like that but brought up to like a modern state so I think Soul Hackers 2 operates somewhere in between these two but it does definitely turn heads. So I want to kind of throw that little narrative and color on here as well. Let's look at something on the bottom here. Let's look at a couple uh, bad ones. So this is Game Informer. Game Informer put here, I just wish I was awarded a bit more humanity and meaning to my struggles by seeing them create that memory for themselves. What the hell? What does that mean, Game Informer? What does that mean, Game Informer? What does that mean? Let's let's take a look at their actual review. Let's 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 just look at their conclusion over here. Uh, okay, we can go through this pretty quick too. Throughout the 30 hours it took to hit the credits, 30 hours? I'm, I'm traveling more towards 40, 40, 45. Oh my god, they must have put a, no offense to them, like, I have, I have no problem. Play on any mode, this tells me they played on easy and they didn't do any side story stuff because, like, there is a lot and a lot of side content and good side content too. 30 hours? Holy crap. Uh, okay, okay, sorry guys. Throughout the 30 hours it took to hit credits, I kept trying to latch onto the elements that work. Soul Hackers 2 saving grace lies in the main characters, each with a distinct personality often clashes with the rest. I don't think so. Witnessing the group's growth by putting their differences aside and opening themselves up to a camaraderie that was a joy. I love their conversation about freelancing as devil summoners as much as the tough chats about the people they lost over a meal or a drink. But that's not their seat on the table for the player to take it all in. During that night at the bar, a group wondered if they'd still be alive by the time flowers bloomed again. And I know that they will because I put in the effort to make sure that happens. I just wish I was awarded a bit more humanity and meaning to my struggles. Seeing them create a memory for themselves. I couldn't agree harder with this story. I feel like this person didn't take enough time to really take in the breadth of everything that was offered. And just opted out for the beadline story. And there are so many little side quests in this game that build up the, you know, kind of the core story and tie everything in t together a little bit more. Um, ugh, yeah, okay. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments about those comments from uh, Game Informer. Uh, let's, let's look, um... Let's look here. So GameSpot here, we have a couple other ones. GameSpot here says, taken as a whole... Uh, however, Soul Hackers 2 is a mostly satisfying experience, uh, which is funny because they just launched three reasons to play Soul Hackers 2 today, but if you don't like the game, why would you tell people to play it? Uh, whatever, though. The character interactions and stylish art help us stand out from the pack, and the smooth, flowing, fast-paced combat makes even some of the more annoying dungeons 
Uh, I don't want to see another abandoned subway for a very long time. It's not even that annoying. Uh, feel like less of a drag. So Hackers as a series has a lot of potential to further grow into its own experience the way Persona uh, has. So Hackers 2, despite its flaws, very promising start. I think. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be interested. Come back to this video, guys, when you guys play the game and let me know what you guys think. Like, this isn't a good start. This is a good game. Uh, okay, Game Rant. Game Rant's a, a, a reputable place. Let's, they gave it an 80. This will be the last one we look at, my friends. Soul Hackers 2 is a great new entry in the SMT franchise. Nailed it. Offering enough differences from its comrades that it doesn't feel like the exact same game. With its wonderful cast of characters, Soul Hackers 2 delivers a story that shows plenty of heart as well as heartbreak. Absolutely. With a theme that resonates with today's world. Despite the bland dungeons, the combat is more than satisfying enough to make up for it, and the music is just a bonus to an already stylish game. If there's an itch to play an SMT game, Soul Hackers 2 will definitely be sure to scratch it. So yeah, I think they nailed a couple of different things, right? Unlike the other reviewer, right? It's very reviews are very personal, very stylish, right? So it immediately breaks the other one, uh, the other one that we looked at. So Hackers 2 delivers a story that shows plenty of heart and heartbreak. See, if you don't if you don't beeline it, you're gonna you're gonna have some good experiences. I will agree that the dungeons or you know the dungeons, the areas that you explore, uh, could be a little more interesting. Uh, but they do serve the purpose that they're trying to serve. All right, my friends, that has been the, a review and a look at the reviews for Soul Hackers 2. I am interested in your thoughts on all of these thoughts on Soul Hackers 2 in the comments below. Thank you for joining my review wrap up for Soul Hackers 2 and look out for my content starting August the 26th. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.